This is a video about plants to intercrop with your tropical fruit trees. I'm kind of cheap when it comes to plants and so I like to buy one plant and then just start dividing it. So all these plants that are identical came from like one plant that I bought. And the ginger, they all started from one plant. So I have a, a lot of different types of ginger though. So um, it adds up if you get a lot of them, different types. But all these, you just do cuttings of and stuff grows underneath them. <clears throat> I'm into cacti because I used to have a large cactus collection in San Diego, Homol, and a small little orchard of nothing rare but citrus and avocado. It's since died. <clears throat> that was 20 years ago though. Um, here, I don't have to worry about stuff dying because you don't have to water it. I'm also into roses. Uh, I worked at a nursery because I thought I wanted to be in the nursery business. And I worked for Vintage Gardens in Sebastopol in Sonoma County. Greg and his partner, who was uh, in charge of the gardens around the Corbell Champagne Cellar tasting rooms. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, this is Crepus Skill. It's a near thornless tea rose, very hard to grow. These are variegated cassava, not edible. Then alocasias and more uh, rugmansias. This is uh, an orange triple flowered one. So all these heliconias, which look nasty, unless you like stay on top of them, and especially this time of year when it's just starting to grow again. I have about, I don't know, 25 different, 20 different types of heliconia. I think some, because I started a bunch in the winter and this winter and they didn't quite make it, but. The expensive one that I wanted, of course, made it the hardest one to grow. But anyway, here's a Garcinia macrophylla. And then I do hibiscus and different other plants. Here's the ginger growing with coconuts that are fruiting. That's kind of how I started seeing that the plants that are the most Uh, aggressive growers are the ones that are packed in close together. So that's, you know, you think of the English garden, it's like, yeah, look, all those different flowers in their borders. And it's like, and I look at this with a, a fruiting coconut and um, uh, Brugmansia and uh, Heliconias, different Heliconias. Some of them are trying to bloom again. Um, and I forget what this is. Uh, Brazilian cloak and I especially like this is a Trinitori O Cacao this is a you know Liquiola palm from Vanuatu I guess is that where it's from but uh, they've gotten really expensive before COVID they yeah, you could get small palms like this or little ones for like, I don't know, $15 or $20, but that's changed, times have changed. Diffenbachia, I really like Diffenbachia. The dumb cane, grows really well. None of this stuff was affected by the 31 degrees. It is awfully close to the house and it's uh, you know, a marble wall there. So uh, probably some heat was, but I think it has more to do with the uh, amount of diversity and foliage you have growing than probably the rock wall. Rock wall helps, 
that. Uh, the alocasias. The gingers. Um, these heliconias, they, uh, they're, uh, they have mycorrhizal fungi growing inside them. So when you chop them down and throw them on the ground, mushrooms come out of them. So they're a good carbon source for for the uh, microbes, the reducing microbes, the fungi, which you want something you kill when you spray with copper. So this stuff, I do water more aggressively around the house and I have a hose. I just kind of turn it on and flood it because I have some expensive trees in here and they like lots of water. I like, I like it lush around the house. But I've been dividing these because I want to intercrop all of these, which I've been doing slowly as they grow uh, throughout the the orchard because this these are cash crops all this stuff that makes your tropical fruit trees produce fruit better easier this is your fertility all this stuff is like ultra expensive i mean the cheapest heliconia are like uh, twenty dollars a you know a, a rhizome so I mean, these all came from one rhizome and I've spread this everywhere. So even at $20, that's like easily a thousand dollars in rhizomes right there. So that could be a cash crop while you're growing your long-term tropical fruit trees. I don't water heliconia except around the house. They don't need it. Once I divide them from this healthy area, they can tolerate drought and full sun. Uh, it doesn't matter. And I plant them in those conditions and they're fine. And this is full sun, of course, but uh, this, is, this one has not flowered yet, but this is the first year it's gotten uh, zebu manure. There's a difference between zebu manure and equine manure, whether it be donkey or mule or a horse. Zebu manure makes stuff fruit and flower. Imagine that. Cow manure that makes stuff fruit and flower. Huh. Wonder where I heard that before. Anyway. So agaves are another one of my favorites. Uh, I was a heavy uh, tequila drinker back in the day. And 100% um, blue agave is what it was usually made from. So this is one of my favorite plants. I have fond memories of Puerto Vallarta and Tijuana and Point South. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So we grow that and we've got about 20 of them growing throughout. You can't really see them because they're, they can kind of be slow, uh, but they all came from one plant. All these heliconias, all these, this color came from one plant. and I have them everywhere else too. And then the only one I haven't started dividing only because, oh, it's blooming, good. So maybe I'll start sending off pups. This is dark black one. And you know, all these uh, that started from one, that color, and it's that color, that ruby red one, Pinot Noir started from one. They send off pups, and the pups are like, I don't know, $30 usually each. The Puntia cacti I was kind of trying here, and I walked on top of my uh, white ghost euphorbia like that and killed it, and I just never bothered replacing it. But I have lots of encephalardos in here and 
those will grow and seed like the the uh, fan palms I showed earlier and you can sell grow and sell the seeds but you can intercrop those in your fruit trees we have a alisapo here so it's not just about the the lawn being grown out but it's also about adding plants into your landscape into your cover crop more plants it's just more diversity I have all kinds of fruit trees growing in here and tree tomato and juicy pearl star apple and I got this is my vegetable garden. You know, I don't do market gardens. I, it's just way too much work. <laughs> but sugar cane. But back to the uh, things other than food. <laughs> all these came from one. This all the same color. This dark black color. They just they're clone they send off clones so you just have to keep dividing them so i have about 50 of those the crinums and then uh the plumerias you can do plumerias and all this stuff can be grown right next to your fruit trees together like a landscape, a perennial landscape is what it is. Coconuts with heliconia, with ginger, with bromeli bromeliads, with plumeria, other landscape plants that you just do cuttings of and put in the ground. Here's another one of my roses. This one seemed like it wasn't doing that good it's called Reb Dior it's another tea rose this one has some thorns on it though um, beautiful flowers they've flowered already I they're gorgeous there's another climbing thornless tea rose antique tea rose As a thorn gets me. Lamarck, which is a beautiful white rose, absolutely stunning. Looks like it has a, a lemon. It's like, I don't know, it's just incredible. Smell, visually, everything. But these bromeliads, they're just. They, I mean, I, it's just shocking that all, these all come from one. I just divided each color over and over again and I'm putting them everywhere. I'm dividing everything and landscaping my uh, food forest like this. So it's just a matter of dividing the stuff, which takes time. Anyway, I just wanted to share. cash crops you could intercrop in rare tropical fruit trees trees freeze uh, for free thank you <laughs>